Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another server admin tutorial. This one is a bonus tutorial for you since I usually do these on Friday. So if you're joining me for the first time, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I do these every Friday, sometimes more than once a week um, if I get the chance. This one came up because uh, it's been almost two years. I think April 11th was when I posted it. Almost two years since I've done Bungie Cord, and I've recently set up Bungie Cord on my own server and realized it's severely out of date. A lot has changed. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't know because I it's been a while since I worked in it. So I figured I would put it together. It would be very helpful for you guys. So that is how it goes. Now we usually do, uh, or I usually take requests from you guys. So feel free to still. Uh, request plugins in the dribbles below however the next few weeks are scheduled out so if I get extra time I will get to them um, otherwise I won't get to it till June next or this Friday is quick sell which is great and then I think vote send is next Friday so anyway let's get to it what Bungie Cord is now Bungie Cord is a proxy plugin or proxy server sorry it's not a plugin it runs by itself and what it does is handles connections between multiple Minecraft servers so when you when you get on Hypixel or Mindplex or the Hive or like there's a ton of other servers out there and there's 10,000 people playing, they're not all playing on the same server. They're playing on a network of servers that are linked together with Bungie Cord or their own custom version of it. People connect the the users, you know, as you can see on on the infographic here, the the users connect to your Bungie Cord and then that directs them to the server. So on their first connection, it connects them to your lobby server and then they can decide to go to any of the other servers. So if you um, are running in a hosting environment, what that means is you need uh, Bungie Cord to be on its own server hosting plan or its own hosting plan and you need to be able to run a custom jar file so i know like mc pro hosting it's not like the first two i think it's the third step up is when they allow you to start running custom jar files i think so check with your hosting company to figure out which plan you need to be able to run a custom jar file and they probably can help you even get a little bit started with a bungee cord also only works with spigot um there's a setting that we'll get into later that um is very apparent why it only works with spigot so if you need to get spigot feel free to, to click here to go to the video to show you guys how to compile the latest version of spigot it'll also give you bucket too if you're looking for that however that will not work with a bungee cord network so if you are running it like i said if you are running it with a hosting plan you need it needs to have its own hosting plan as well as each one of the servers after it. So your lobby server and then every one of those that you want to connect. So there's not really, there's not anything to go over right now in the, um, in here, we'll go over some some uh, commands after we've looked through the configuration file and looked at the permission nodes and all permissions and all that. Let's hop into it. Okay, so here we are. We got uh, our three servers here that we've set up, which is my uh, fan server, my prison server, and then just a, it, there's nothing on it. It's just a straight up regular server, but I named it factions. And then we have bungee cord. So we're gonna go into bungee cord. Now, uh, you're gonna download this bungee cord jar and that's all you need to, to start this off. And then you have a bat file, which I'll put I'll put it in, in the, the jibbles or the description, uh, what you need to put in there, but it's pretty straightforward. There you go. Now, this is the size of the server. Um, now, if you are running in a, a server hosting environment, you probably don't need to do this, but if you're running it uh, off a dedicated server or at home, then this is what you need to do. And then we need to fire up the config file. And this is where it is. Now, I've noticed that the layout of this file will change. So it may not look exactly the same, but it will still have all the items in it. So here's where it's going to set your groups and your permissions. So your username and then the uh, admin group, which then is going to give the admin group all of these access to these, these permission nodes, which we'll talk about these commands in a bit. But... The two basic ones are server and list, so that will list the servers that they connect to, and then it'll give them access to the command to do slash server. So if you want them to be able to use only use portals or, or whatever tool that you have, then you want to remove that from them so that they can't run that command. Now listeners, now this is where it's gonna this is where you set up a lot of stuff. So uh, you can set up your message of the day, uh, you can set up your query, 
probably just leave that false. Now, global play, ping is what's going to show up on the tab list. Now, it, global means it's going to show everybody who's connected to the the server network. Um, and then the underscore ping means it's going to show their ping. So you can have global or you can have global underscore ping, or you can have just server in there. And then that's going to have it only show up the tablets only be what's on the, that server so force host this is the ip so if you have a domain you can actually have it where people can connect to your bungee cord network using different uh server links and it'll just direct them right to that server so i could if i set it up prison to point to my server then prison.mcfriends.us i could put that in there and then it would automatically direct them to uh, the prison server which is kind of cool so default server uh, uh, there um, buying local server address fallback server is lobby so if they get if they get kicked off the server it'll automatically go back to the default server now host that's where you're gonna put the IP address if you're running a dedicated IP or dedicated server now if you have zeros it's just gonna look uh, look for anything that connects to the box on that port um, so you probably don't need to change that if you are running on a hosting environment that'll that'll need to be whatever your server IP is max players tab size that kind of makes sense there force default server so if you set that to true that means every time they connect it'll direct them to the default server um, so if they've logged off and they're on one of the other servers next time they connect it'll make them connect to the lobby server you know whatever you want you can have it whatever so now this is uh timeout connection throttle pretty straightforward these are standard settings in spigot and bucket they're already there um we'll get into why this is important because you actually need to change some stuff on your each server for that now here's where you set up your servers now the first thing you need to do uh is this is the name of the server. That's what's going to show up when they do the server list and then uh, the message of the day. And then you can put restricted. So that is true or false. So if you put true, what that means is they need the permission no bungee cord dot server dot server name in order to connect to that server. So pretty straightforward. And then you put in the IP address and the port. So if you're running on the same uh, box and you just put localhost colon and then the port if you're running somewhere else you want to put the ip address and the port that you have those servers set up on so pretty straightforward now you want to set ip forwarding to be true that way if you're running some sort of band manager or ip checker the ips will be uh, correct on each one of those servers otherwise the band checker will only see the ip of bungee cord so if you're running into a problem, that's what's happening. Then online mo mode, true or false. So that's the same thing as the servers. You want Bungie Core to be running in online mode. So that's verifying your users that are connecting. Uh, each server behind it is going to be running offline mode. We'll show you guys that in a second. If you want your, if you want to allow people with cracked Minecraft or you know hacked and stolen Minecraft to connect to your servers, then you would put that to false obviously but then you need to run some sort of uh, password system so that players cannot take your account when they connect to your server and mess it all up so all right let's hop over to prison real quick and we'll show you guys what you need to do in here so the first thing we want to do is open up the server properties and we want to set the offline mode to false like i said you want this to be false now a uh, couple things to note if you set this to false and players are still able to connect directly to your server behind bungee cord then they'll be able to bypass the verification and be able to mimic your username and mess up your server so here's there's two ways you can get around that if you're running on a dedicated server or on the same box as bungee cord you can set your server ip to 127.0.0.1 what that means is now your server is only listening for local connections so it will only receive connections from bungee cord um if somebody tries if does figure out what port the server is running on and they attempt to directly connect to it it will not respond because it's not going to accept connections from that and then you set your server port to be whatever it is in the config file and that's all for the properties section so we're going to go ahead and close that we don't need to open that as you can see the prison server is running on 25570 so we'll go ahead and close that the next thing we want to do is we want to open up this spigot.yml file now this is why it's important that you're running spigot 
because there's a setting in here called bungee cord true now one thing to note is if you're running a server in offline mode your uuid is actually different than if the server is running in online mode unless you set bungee cord to true if you do not change this it does not it doesn't figure that out and uh, it thinks that you're running in offline mode when you're actually not so set that to true and then your server will be able to run just fine The last setting that we need to do is we need to find this bucket.yml file We need to open this up and actually I've not updated it for this so it could cause problems um, But you want to change this to negative one So what connection throttle does is it makes sure that there's not a connection every 4,000 milliseconds I think is what it is milliseconds now, usually that's not a problem when you're running a, a straight up server because a single connection will not try to reconnect 4,000, you know, it within 4,000 seconds, milliseconds. I don't think you can even if you just try to reconnect. It, this is to cut down on like people spamming your server and everything. Now, the problem with this, if you don't change this to negative one, when somebody connects from a bungee cord server and then somebody else connects to the bungee cord, the server sees those as the same connection so that it, it will then start throttling itself and protecting itself. Now, bungee cord is the one that's protecting your, your all your servers, so you need to turn this off for each one of your servers by setting that to negative one. Let's hop back in the, into the server. I'll talk about security options for running on a hosted network, and then we'll go through some of the commands. Okay, so here we are back on the server. Now, I, di I didn't t talk about it, but if you want security options for um, running on a hosted network or if you have a bungee cord that's not on the same box so maybe your friends and you just want to like link all your servers up at home and all that what you need to do is run an ip whitelist plugin on your on your server what that'll do is then you can set that up to have only the ip address of the bungee cord except connect you know it will only accept connections from that ip address that way um when connections are coming in and they're not coming from bungee cord they'll get denied which you want okay so let's go over some of the uh, commands we talked about the permission section of that um, and you'll see the permission node show up over the top here so we could do alert help and then that will send a message basically like an announcement message to everybody on the server there's also alert raw and what that does is allows you to send JavaScript messages or JSON messages. I thought that was JavaScript. I'm not completely sure. You can do Bungie, which is going to show you the version of Bungie that you're running. You can do slash end, which is actually going to end your Bungie cord uh, server, which is going to basically shut it off. So we don't want to do that. You can do find, uh, find user, um, maybe. Maybe it won't actually. So then, because I'm not, it's it's me. So you can do find user, and it's going to show you what server they're on. You could do glist, which is going to show you um, all the all the servers and what what uh, who's connected and how many, all that stuff. You can do g reload as well. Now the thing about g reload is they don't recommend using it a whole lot. What it will reload is your listeners and server list. So if you want to add a server to it, you can do g reload. However, it will not reload the permissions. So kind of a bummer if you want to modify your permission groups or your users uh, in the groups, you need to restart Bungie Cord or you need to use a plugin called Bungie Perms, which I'm having troubles with. So um, I'll probably do a plugin tutorial on that once I figure that one out. And um, yeah, so you can do perms as well and you can that will check the perms that you have access to you can do send um, and then the player name and then uh, the, the server that you want to send them to however it won't let me do that for myself the other options instead of the player is you can do current that's going to send everybody on the current server to the target server and then or you could do send all to the to the target server now it's going to send everybody connected to the bungee cord um, that's not already on that target server and then, of course, you have the server command, which is going to show you all the servers that you've access to. And then you can do server prison, and then you can hop on over. So sneak peek at our prison uh, server here pretty soon. Anyway, so we'll hop back over to, I think it just named it hub 
server. Oh no, I named it hop. Oh, so we could do factions. We can hop over. Oh wait, no, I don't have it it's online. <laughs> server lobby. There we go. Let's head back to the lobby. And uh, that's all I got. Like I said, all of, all of it's done in that config file for Bungie Court. It runs on its own server by itself, completely separated from your other servers. So I had, uh, you saw two, basically two servers, examples in there, my factions and my lobby server. So um, you can do this for however many servers you want. And I hope that is helpful for you guys. So feel free, like, comment, subscribe. This is Kaz from McFriends reminding you guys all, Enjoy the game. God bless.